All right, so we're doing some more uh, circle proofs. This time it's the chord of a circle theorem. So to do this, we're going to need a circle. And after the circle is drawn with a little origin there, center, we're going to need a chord. Now, a chord is just a line drawn from one point on the circle to a different point on the circle, and not necessarily passing through the origin. Better if we don't pass through the origin, or this won't really make sense. All right, so my chord is drawn. Uh, my origin is there. And now I think I need to resort to some written words here because I need to be very explicit about what this looks like. So the theorem states this, a perpendicular drawn from the center of a circle to a chord will be a chord. All right, so perpendicular means makes a right angle with. So we're drawing a perpendicular line from the center to the chord so that they make right angles with each other. So a line from the origin to the chord and they make a right angle. And what our theorem says that if you draw a perpendicular from the center of a circle to a chord, so a right angle there, you will bisect the chord. You will bisect, cut in half the chord. So what we're really trying to prove is that this line, let's call this C, we're trying to prove that AC is equal to line CB. So really, we need to be aware of what we know and what we don't know. We know that that's a right angle. We know uh, that that's the origin. We know that this is a chord, but we don't know that these are equal. That's the thing we're trying to prove. So I really need to get rid of these little uh, lines here because I don't know that yet. All right, that's better. Let's get started. Now, when it comes to circle theorems, a great thing to have is a triangle. So I'm going to draw a triangle here. Maybe I'm going to draw two of them. Uh, if I draw a line from O to B, and I draw a line from O to A, I've got two constructions happening there. Now, uh, I've drawn in a right angle there, but I'm also just going to draw in another right angle there. And that's pretty obvious. If you've got a right angle on one side, you've got a right angle on the other. I don't have to write anything about that. That much is clear. Uh, okay, what can we see here? Well, we're dealing with a circle. We've got a line and another line both going from the origin to the edge, so they're radiuses. So I can now say that AO is equal to uh, BO, and the reason for that, this happens all the time with circle theorems, is that they're both radius, radii. Now, look at this triangle, ACO, and look at this triangle, BCO. They have a line in common. This line, OC, is common to both AOC and OCB. Now, what can I do with that information? Well, I know that this length is something. I know that this, and I know that that's the same. I know that that length is the same as well. And I also know that they are both right angle triangles. This is enough to prove that triangle OBC and triangle OAC are congruent. For congruence is my little three lines here, and the reason for congruent is RHS, um, a right angle triangle, a hypotenuse, and a side. Now, if those two triangles are congruent, therefore AC must be equal to BC quad erat demonstratum. So maybe you don't like congruent triangles. Maybe this proof seemed fine to you until you got to here and it just stopped working out. Or you just thought, I wouldn't have thought to do that. I never understood congruent triangles. Well, let's try something else instead. So we're going to pick up the action there and we're going to rely on Pythagoras' theorem because we've got uh, two right angle triangles. So let's deal with triangle ACO first. We can say that line AC, so AC squared plus CO squared is equal to AO squared. Now, Pythagoras' theorem. Now, this triangle over here, we can say the same thing. So we can say that and BC squared um, plus CO squared is equal to uh, OB squared. 
already know that AO and OB are equal because they're radii, right? Um, so AO equals BO. Therefore, if this is equal to this, then all of this must be equal to all of this. So we can say, therefore, AC squared plus CO squared must be equal to BC squared plus CO squared. Now, wait a minute. There's a CO squared there and a CO squared there. So I can um, subtract them, right? Subtract CO squared from both sides because they're the same thing. And what I'm left with is AC squared equals BC squared. And if AC squared equals BC squared, then AC equals BC, because I can take the root of both sides. AC equals BC, and I can say Q parat demonstratum. So there's two ways to solve this. They both start here, and then you can either start talking about congruent triangles, or you can pull out some Pythagoras action.